once. I've seen it a hundred times. Bad temper means trouble. You could have stayed here, you know, if you'd only agreed to do what you're told. Instead, you've talked yourself into exile. So unnecessary. Well, I'm not worried either way. You can tell the world what a swine Jason is, but all that against the royal family. You're lucky they only banished you. I've done everything I could. Believe me, I never wanted you to have to leave. But denouncing them as tyrants, you must be off your head. Exile. You brought this on yourself, Medea. Still, I would never desert a friend. We need to think about your future. That's why I've come here. We can't have you destitute, not with the children. It can be difficult exile, all manner of problems. So, hate me if you like, but I bear no grudge against you. I best restrain myself, I think, and like a good helmsman on a ship, reef in the sail and run before the storm of that unfettered tongue of yours. I have to say, as you claim a debt from me, that Aphrodite was my protectress on that voyage, the goddess, her alone, and no one else. Oh, you're good with words, Medea. Perhaps it seems unchivalrous to suggest that it was simply love <laughs> whose arrows forced you to save my life. I don't want to make an issue of it. The assistance you gave was quite valuable, but you did get better than you gave, I think it's fair to say, to begin with. Instead of that barbaric place, you now live in the civilized world. A seat of justice and the rule of law, instead of mindless violence. Everyone here knows how clever you are. You're famous. If you'd still been living in that far-flung country of yours, no one would have heard of you. For my part, a house crammed full of gold, or the skill to sing and play like Orpheus, would have no meaning without the fame. So much for your part in my heroics, but you did raise the subject. As for my marriage, <laughs> my royal marriage, that was a clever decision, you must agree, as well as a sensible one. The best thing to, really, for you and the boys. No, wait a minute. When I arrived here from Iolcus, weighed down by a series of disasters, what greater ambition they have had as an immigrant than to marry the king's daughter. It was not. And I know that this is what upsets you. It was not that I stopped loving you and fancied some new woman or wanted a bigger family. The boys, they're fine, no complaints there. But so that we could live a respectable life. That's what it all comes down to and never go short. I know what it's like for a man who's poor. Friends shun him. This way, I could have another family as befits my station and bring them up as half-brothers for our boys. One big happy family. You don't need more children. But for me, more sons would be a benefit to the others. Do you see what's wrong with that? But for your sexual jealousy, you women... You're fixated. You've convinced yourselves that if you're happy in bed, nothing else matters. If not, everything's a disaster. I wish there was some other way to father children. No women. That would solve everything. Yes, son! You men too. Stekos, Mestas, Logos, Omus.